All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you very much for taking the time for attending today's webinar, um, the deep dive on video creation in Enscape. My name is Kai Burival, and over the next roughly 45, 60 minutes, um, we're going to explore yeah, the video creation abilities in Enscape, um, the user interface, as well as um, tips and tricks on how to create beautiful, uh, nice videos quickly inside of Enscape. Um, yeah, let's see there. I'm, I'm thinking if I forgot about anything. Yeah, the sample project that you see um, takes place today in Revit. So um, if you have Revit and you want to, to have a look at the sample project yourself, you can find it on our website under enscape3d.com. If we go to the very bottom of the website, we find um, sample projects. This link right here. And uh, here you can, among others, find, among a lot of other sample projects, you can find this um, sample project for Revit. However, this is not a Revit-centric web webinar. Um, this is completely design application agnostic. So whatever design application you're using, we're going to stay inside of Enscape today. And we will have a look at the Enscape user interface in the video editor. We will first go through a basic workflow, um, how to create a video really fast uh, as soon as possible. Then we will explore the user interface in the video editor in general. And then we're gonna dive into the details, into some more advanced tips and tricks like keyframe animation, um, and also into how to assemble a nice video in a third party video editing software. So stay tuned, we have a lot to cover. Um, this video or this webinar is being recorded so uh, you can watch it afterwards. Um, yeah, let's get going. So Enscape among other, uh, among other exporting functionalities like rendering images, panoramas, etc., has a video editor. This looks like, like this in the Enscape user interface. Um, that allows you to create nice fly-throughs um, easily and quickly. And uh, yeah, the quickest way to open the... Or by the way, I expect that you have basic knowledge of the Enscape user interface of navigation, especially because we're going to need that a lot um, during our, our webinar today. Um, if you ever struggle with navigation, you can synchronize... Um, the views from directly from your design application, also to create uh, keyframes, but I would not recommend that. So it's best to just get used to navigation in Enscape um, to be able to create uh, videos, yeah, freely. So basic workflow, how to create a video in Enscape in the next five to 10 minutes. Um, simply press this button up here, the video editor button, or press the V key on your keyboard. This will open the Enscape user, or sorry, the Enscape video editor user interface, um, which we'll explore in the next step. So um, let's not, not hurry. Let's create a simple video. How to do that? How to start? Um, to start a video, it's not just opening the video editor, but you can start by clicking this plus icon in the bottom right corner. So by clicking that, the alternative is I can also press K on my keyboard. So whatever I prefer, I'll click this plus icon in the bottom right. It's important because we will also see a uh, icon in the bottom left. We're clicking the one on the bottom right. Um, clicking the one on the bottom right will create a camera. This, uh, or at least something that looks like a camera, a keyframe somewhere in 3D space, wherever we are uh, in the Enscape scene. So clicking this plus icon down here will essentially um, store or create a keyframe and save the location and the view angle um, as part of our video. In this case, as the starting part, as the starting location for our video. 
And we also see a representation of this camera, of this keyframe here in the ends, in the toolbar. Again, we're going to explore that in more detail later, but we see this camera, this camera here, we see it as this triangle, as a starting triangle. We'll see clearer if we go somewhere else, press this plus icon one more time, and this will create a second keyframe, a second camera symbol. Um, next in line. So let's just continue and place another keyframe, another camera right here. And now it becomes more obvious what happens here. So we start, we placed our first camera, um, we placed our second camera and our third camera, and we see each as representation down here in our timeline, the beginning, the middle, and the last keyframe or camera. And we can enter each one of those by clicking on this uh, representation in the timeline, press escape to exit again, or by simply clicking on the camera itself in the 3D space. That will bring us into, into the view. But we just want to create a video really fast. So I'm just gonna continue, press plus, And whenever I place a, um, or whenever I click this button, place a keyframe, it will uh, create an additional step at the end of our video. So it will take the last keyframe that we have and it's gonna create one more after, uh, after the last one and connect them with this path that you see, this blue, um, blue tube with arrows on it. By the way, if you're wondering now, uh, I keep pressing this plus icon on the left. What does the plus icon, uh, sorry, on the right, the plus icon on the right, I keep pressing that one. What happens if I place, uh, sorry, if I press the plus icon on the left? Well, it will create another keyframe, not at the start, but at, at the end, or uh, sorry, not at the end, but at the beginning. So one more time. If I press the, le the left keyframe, it will create a keyframe before my first keyframe. Let's just visualize that. I'm gonna go here, plus, and now we have another one that now serves as our first keyframe starting our video. If I press the plus icon on the right, I'm gonna place another keyframe at the end of our video path, which is usually what you want to do. So I recommend, you know, just press K on your keyboard. That's uh, accessing this right button. So the, the plus icon on the right, um, or just press this button here to create a new keyframe and fly through the model, look for nice perspectives and block out your video path by simply pressing plus over and over. What happens, uh, we can always preview our video. We can press this button here or the P key on our keyboard and uh, we will see our camera path so far, the one that we've created. Um, and this would be our video if we decided to click on export here in the bottom right corner. Let's wait for a couple seconds, see where this leads us. And um, see how fast it is to create a video like that. So you've seen it, we've hit a wall here. So we probably want to change a little bit about our video path here. You can see it here as well. The camera path shows us we are hitting this wall. So I want to update uh, the position, the location of either this camera or this one back here, or we can also add an additional camera in between the two of them, which you can do either by, you know, clicking on the area down here on our timeline or by pressing or by, sorry, clicking on the timeline with the left mouse button, clicking on the timeline um, where we want this camera to be placed. Let's move this a little bit and click update on the left here to save the changes we've made. Again, we're gonna dive or we, we're, gonna ex uh, we're gonna discuss these topics in more detail later on. But for now, um, let's just go through this process. If we want to, to add any changes, 
Um, let's add an, an additional keyframe and let's uh, move it. We're moving it just by uh, navigating through Enscape as we do it usually. And once we have a location that we like, press update and press escape on the keyboard to, e to exit this keyframe again. And now we see our updated camera path right there. So if we watch, if we want to see what this looks like, we can start from the very beginning, from our first camera, from our first keyframe. Um, but you know, this can take some time. So act I actually want to start my preview from this camera here. So I'm gonna left click onto the camera and many people don't know that if I press P now or this play or preview button in the bottom left, if I press that now, it will start the preview straight from here, from the keyframe from the camera that we are in. So we don't have to watch the whole video from the beginning um, every single time. And as you've seen, I'm just gonna press escape again. So we exit the camera and see the camera path again. By the way, that's a good rule of thumb. If you don't see your camera path and the rest of the cameras, that's because you are inside of a camera, inside of one of those keyframes. You also notice that by seeing these keyframe overrides here on the left, simply press escape on your keyboard and you will exit the camera um, so you don't perform any changes you didn't want to. So yeah, uh, let's recap just quickly. We've learned how to place, how to open the video editor, first of all, <laughs> like this, um, how to place keyframes, cameras by pressing the K key or by pressing this plus icon at the bottom right. We can also place a keyframe before the first, the currently first keyframe by pressing the plus button on the left. We can preview our video at any point by clicking the preview button here, the play button or the P key. And by the way, it might also be a good time to point out that we have this help mark, this help question mark, the help panel in the top right corner, uh, where you can see the general navigation at any point, And you can also see the shortcuts for the video editor that uh, while the video editor is open. So add a keyframe, it's a key, that's K, preview from current keyframe, that's the P, new video path, would be an X, delete keyframe is delete, or you can enter the keyframe and press uh, this trash bin icon here and exit keyframe, that's the ES ESC, the escape button on your keyboard. And then again, how to create a video path like this, just fly through your model and find nice perspectives, nice individual shots, press K or um, this plus button and Enscape will connect it uh, automatically with a nice smooth curve. How to export a video? Well, simply, oh, by the way, I'm just gonna disable ease in and out. And uh, how to export a video? Simply click on this export button in the bottom right. Uh, Enscape will ask you what um, settings you prefer for your, uh, for your video, full HD, Compression or sorry, resolution, compression quality, and frames per second. The resolution you can decide either full HD or ultra HD, which would be 4K. I feel like full HD is usually um, all right. I'm going to use that for this uh, for this webinar, so we don't have to wait for too long. Compression quality, you can absolutely uh, leave this as at maximum at all times. In my opinion, Enscape videos that you create. It's gonna export an MP4 file. Enscape videos are usually uh, not very big in size. So unless you want to send your video via email for which it has to be below 20 megabyte, I uh, recommend to always go with maximum. Lossless is one step higher than maximum, uh, but it will create a series of PNG images, image files. So depending on your video software that you will continue or that you will, yeah, will continue work on uh, this, on your videos in. Uh, you can go with it if you know how to import them or just go with maximum and it's all right. Frames per second, 
you can decide if you want 25, 30, 60, or 120 frames per second. Of course, if you have 60 frames per second, it will render twice as long than if you choose 30 frames per second. But that shouldn't be too much of an issue um, because Enscape renders quite fast. We'll see that in a second. Now, this video is no actual video yet, once again, just wanted to give us a nice introduction in the first 15 minutes by going shallowly or top level over the process and uh, show you how to, yeah, create and export a video as fast as possible. And as you see, um, Enscape is exporting the video, as I said, really quickly. We just had to decide where to save it. And um, let's see, sorry, that's... We can clean up here a little bit. Um, yeah, and Enscape uh, creates the video really fast, as I said, so you don't have to worry about rendering times in a lot of cases. Um, let me cancel this video creation because first I want to go with you over the user interface so you, you know, have more understanding of what actually is going on. And then we will create a more um, adequate series of videos of uh, rendering. So let me cancel. But I want to show you something because um, Enscape, again, I choose, wait a minute, oh, sorry. Escape used to cancel uh, the process, but I'm just gonna press cancel and that's gonna cancel the rendering process. And um, Enscape does create uh, a video file that we can view um, until the point of where we canceled it, if that makes sense. So just so you know, if you, are rendering a three minute video and you're canceling the process after one minute, you will still get a, get a video up to, up to that point. So um, just wanted to show you that. All right. We went ahead quite fast there. Um, I hope that that wasn't too confusing. Let's go uh, two steps back and have a look at the video editor user interface. So once again, opening the video editor using this cutting board, I don't know what it's called, um, icon. And usually we start with an empty scene. So I'm just gonna click new video path and this is gonna delete what we had so far. If you had a video path in the past that you would like to load, which can be useful in certain cases, which we'll explore later on, um, then you can load a path from an existing file. But in this case, we're gonna start from scratch. Um, one thing that can help creating your video path is the show grid lines uh, checkbox here in the top left. Just, with a, just as with a camera, um, this can help following the rule of thirds, which means you try to um, store your details add one of these intersections that you have here, uh, the most important parts of a rendering somewhere, you know, on one of these intersections. I'm no photographer, so don't expect anything great from me, but um, if you have some experience, you know, this can help setting up the most beautiful shots. So um, let's create a a video from scratch. Let's click on this plus icon to create our first keyframe, just like we did before. This time we might travel a little bit to the left here and, uh, you know, get this shot and we'll get a little, yeah, to, to ground level and continue from here. So um, let's talk about the duration of your video, of your, of the video that you're creating. Enscape has two settings for you to select um, the overall length of your video. The one is the total duration um, setting or uh, selection that you see here. You can affect it by clicking on the number and you know you have a hour, minute and second um, dial, which you can change either by clicking up and down on these arrows or by entering a number. So this will control your overall, the, the overall length of your video. You see the overall length here and on the bottom right here. 
So right above the export button, you see the current overall length of the video. This is um, option number one to control the overall length. The second option can be found inside of the keyframes themselves and is called the timestamp. But this is something that we're going to cover a little bit later. In general, and we're going to cover that um, later one more time as well, in general I recommend to use the total duration slider more at the beginning of a video creation process or for short videos, for short snippets. And it's gonna become clear at the end why um, I think that's the case. But let's explore this, uh, this first, the total duration. Right now it is grayed out, as you see, because I'm currently inside of one of those keyframes, as you see on the bottom, inside of those cameras. So I'm gonna press escape by the way, I could also press this exit keyframe button here. It looks like uh, yeah, an exit sign. So I'm just going to press that. And um, that has the same effect as pressing escape. It's going to move me out of the, of the keyframe, out of that camera. But we're still in the video editor interface. So yeah, let's say we have, you know, this first shot. We start, let me actually remove the grid lines for now. We start back here, move there, then here, and we are already at 37 seconds. I imagine this to be kind of like a outside uh, flight and then we're going to enter the building. I think I want to be relatively fast on the outside. So 30 second, uh, 37 seconds, that feels something like, like this. Really fast, or at, at, at the beginning right now, I want to get a feel for my for my uh, video, for my fly through. So I'm gonna dial down this number. I think I'm gonna go with something like maybe 10 seconds for this flight so far. I'm gonna press enter um, to save the information. And let's compare our, our video. I'm pressing P or this preview button down here. And you see we have a higher pace now. We're moving through through the environment. Uh, way faster. This kind of resembles what I imagine for my final for this final video. All right, looking good. So I'm gonna continue. Um, I'm gonna press K on my keyboard to save a camera, a keyframe. Gonna enter the building through this window here. We have no collision, um, so we can easily enter through windows. And we're gonna continue through this interior. Maybe let's actually do something like a rotation. So let's see, we have our last keyframe is, is here. We're gonna continue from there. So I'm gonna place another keyframe here in which I'm looking in this direction. Then I'm gonna look up so we get a feel for the room. Maybe let's follow the stairs and I'm gonna press K or this plus button in the bottom right once again to save this particular keyframe. And you see how the camera symbolizes where we are looking. I'm gonna look back here, click another plus to place another keyframe and continue looking at this entrance area. So you see there a lot, oh, sorry, I hit the microphone. A lot has happened here. Uh, we have a number of keyframes there and we want to see if everything works as we imagine it. So I'm just going to enter this keyframe again. Sorry, I'm going to enter this keyframe here. Not again. I enter this keyframe, press P and see how our little pirouette, our little uh, rotation looks. Okay, it's way too fast. Have you noticed that? So um, this is a result of our total duration slider that we've changed earlier. Remember, we have changed this to 10 seconds duration. Now we're already at 16 seconds of total duration. So it's not gonna use your number, your value that you enter there as a concrete setting. 
if you add additional keyframes after that 10 second mark, um, it, it is gonna extend your video, but with the same pace as before. Um, that means we are moving inside right now with the same speed that we moved with being outside of the building. Let's say we want to change that. So this will lead us for the first time inside of the keyframe of the camera interface. So uh, if we click on any of these cameras, you see some additional information here. First of all, we have the keyframe number, five of 10 right now. We can exit the keyframe by clicking this, uh, this button. We can delete the keyframe by clicking the trash bin. Um, we can update the location of our camera by clicking update. And then we have these four values, timestamp, time of day, focal point, and field of view. We're gonna cover those. Um, first of all, the timestamp. The timestamp, so all of these keyframes, you can imagine those to be like, um, yeah, like values that you can set for each camera, for each keyframe and change them over time. So for example, with, you know, time of day, you can set 6 a.m. for your first view, 12 p.m. for your last view, and then it's gonna move the time between those, those views. The timestamp slider here controls the, um, the time in your video. So this means if I enable this, um, this keyframe, this camera is being reached at second 12. And it changed to second uh, 46 because uh, I briefly overrode the entire thing and now it's set my total duration to one minute. Um, so yeah, this can happen if you, if you, if you explain something. Um, we have two options here now. Either we uh, return to our video or our total duration slider um, change it back to where we were. So let's go to 16 seconds, for example, and let's re-observe what happened. So right now we have the total duration slider or controlling the overall length of the video and therefore the speed. So we move with one speed throughout the entire video, except for right now we are easing in and out. So we are starting slowly gaining speed then have a uh, equally fast speed throughout the video and then uh, slow down again, but I'm gonna disable this. So right now we have an equal speed throughout the video. So you see we move with one speed uh, outside of, of the building and we, uh, we keep that pace, we keep that speed while we're inside. Now what do we what do we do if we want to slow down here because that last rotation is really awful for uh, for the viewer? We want to take away the control of this total duration slider, and we want to control the the speed with our keyframes instead. Now we have a portion of our video <coughs> that we like. The first ten seconds, the outside is just the right pace. So how can we change this whole portion of that video without changing what we have beforehand? Well, uh, to do that, we kind of do something that I call tying the knot or tying a knot. So we want to go to the end, to the last keyframe of the portion of the video path that we want to keep the, the same. We want to keep that untouched. So we're entering the last keyframe that we want to keep untouched and we enable timestamp. And now you will see it will override the uh, total duration slider again. Uh, and instead we want this to stay where it was before. It was at 10 seconds, I assume. So uh, um, if we did not unclick it the first time, that is the value it would have kept. Oh yeah, it was it was a 12, now I remember. So uh, 
we wouldn't have erased it if we didn't uh, uncheck the timestamp again. So now we are reaching this particular keyframe, this camera at second 12, like before. And now we can perform changes to whatever happens after that. So if we want to slow down after this, uh, we can simply go into the next keyframe in order. And by the way, we can do this as well using these two arrow keys, previous keyframe, next keyframe. And I want to enter times or click the timestamp value here too, because I want to edit it and change it to something. Let's just test it here. This is pure guesswork. Let's go with maybe 17 seconds. And you see down on the timeline, something happened. So right now we were at 13 seconds. And now we're at uh, 17. So the timeline always shows us a relative um, or the, the total duration of our video, actually. Um, and the distance between the individual keyframes, we see them as diamond shapes on the timeline. The distance between those keyframes is equal to the distance in time it takes to reach one or the other keyframe. Which if we move at the same, at the same speed throughout the video, um, would also mean it's, it's the distance in, in, in space, essentially. But we can change our speed throughout the video by changing the, you know, by changing more than one timestamp. That's actually it. So if we just change one timestamp, we're going to have the same speed throughout the video. As soon as we change a second one, we uh, change our speed as well. Because, let me go over it one more time, you see it in the timeline happening there. So 13 seconds for this keyframe. We reach this keyframe on second 13. Now we reach this keyframe on second 17. And first of all, the distance between keyframe, what is it, five and six, the distance grows much larger because now it's instead of just one second distance, it's four seconds distance. But the distance between the following uh, diamonds, between the following keyframes changes as well because we don't have any following timestamp change. So the speed that the viewer has, the camera has at this point of the video, because we're not changing anything anymore, we keep um, this pace until the end. Unless, you know, you could change something about this keyframe here, change the timestamp there, and everything would change again. Right now, we're at, at 29 seconds for the whole thing. So I think it's a good point to review and see what's happening. So we have two keyframes that we've set. And by the way, you can also see that from the outside. Uh, you see under this camera that the timestamp value, that's this uh, watch here, that, that's, that has changed or that has a certain setting and this one too. So this one being set to second, to second 12, this one being set to second 17. Let's review what we created. Let's uh, click the preview button. So we have a certain speed at the moment up until a second 12. And that's where we suddenly slow down because now we're supposed to reach that next keyframe at second 17. And now because we don't have any more directions, uh, it's just keeping this speed, which I feel is perfect for this uh, portion of the video. I hope it wasn't too, too confusing so far. This is, um, you know, once again, total duration. If we want to, to change uh, the entirety of the video, the, the, all of our, of our speeds, essentially, uh, we can still go with a total duration slider, but I recommend at a certain complexity to stay away from the total duration slider and instead go with the uh, timestamp value, the, the timestamp setting. Now, I'm sorry, but I have to make this topic a little more complex even. Um, the timestamp is quite quite important if you want to create more controlled videos, so I'm spending a lot of time on that. 
Um, but as you see, this last timestamp is grayed out. Um, that is just something that you have to keep in mind with Enscape. You cannot key the timestamp value for your last keyframe. So if I wanted to change um, the speed again, which I do, we're going to do that in a second, but I would have to place another keyframe right before this one or right after it to control the timestamp value, you know, for, for this particular one. So let's just do this exercise again. Um, we're going to add another keyframe in the slow area. So I just pressed K, the K key again. You can press this button, the plus button. And we're going to exit through this door. Plus. And until here, I want things to stay slow. And from here on, I want to um, speed up again to end in a total shot. Let's just go here and there. So we have one full tour through the building, if you you know where we are going with that. So let's place this last keyframe. And now we want to speed up um, this last portion again of our video. But as I said, we want to keep this enti entire area as it was before. And of course, the one before that as well. So we were fast, slow, and then we want to be fast again. How? Are we going to do that? Once again, we are tying a knot. So what I showed you earlier, I'm just going to enter this camera, this keyframe. And, you know, we're at a total of one minute and six seconds. Too long for me. We see it down here. Um, we want to keep everything as it is until here. So that's 33 seconds. I'm just going to enable timestamp. Don't have to click anything else. I'm just going to click escape to exit this keyframe and you see we have stored this value in this keyframe. So everything before this will stay as it is. And now we can speed up for the last part again. So we're just gonna go into the last keyframe. And as I just told you, you cannot create a timestamp for this last keyframe. So I'm gonna exit it again, place one keyframe just for this, right before uh, the last keyframe click on timestamp, but then again, one minute and five seconds, 30 seconds for this last stretch. I don't want to go through that, so I'm gonna dial down the num uh, the minute number, and uh, the last one was at 33 seconds, so let's go, go with 45 with this. And down there, you see our timeline has uh, adjusted again, and a rule of thumb I like when the uh, keyframe placement is somewhat, you know, equal, throughout the video that shows us that we have uh, roughly the right, the right amount of detail. So let's see, we can go and save what we have. Let me just do that. Save video path to file. Let's give it a one, save. Just if you know we need it for later or uh, want to use it again, um, let's preview what we have. Oh yeah, I was in this keyframe it previewed from that keyframe. So let's preview from outside of the keyframe. Let's press P or the preview button. Review what we have. And we're slowing down for the first time or yeah, for the only time. We're slowing down, taking our time in this, in this room here. And now we're gonna pick up speed again because we're we have this next knot we uh, we put in before and now again we picked up some speed and uh, moving yeah outside again. All right, so I like what that looks like. Um, before we export this, though, let me talk about the other options for movement we have here and the other options for. Uh, keyframe animation. So uh, ease in and out affects just the beginning and the end of your video is gonna start slowly, pick up speed, uh, you know, for a couple seconds, then move equally fast. 
and then uh, slow down again towards the end. And shaky camera, instead of flo instead of following the, the camera path that um, Enscape has created, the camera will wiggle up and down a little bit uh, to uh, create the effect of a human hand that is holding the camera. Nice effect. I don't think, I personally don't use them every time, more, you know, in exceptions. Um, if we enter one of those keyframes, we will see, as I mentioned before, four values we can keep for each of these keyframes. We discussed timestamp, uh, the, time, the timestamp um, settings here. Um, let's have a look at time of day. So there is one more thing that is good to know uh, when animating the time of day. It will take up a little bit or it will render a little bit slower when you're uh, animating the time of day throughout the video. So it's nothing that you want to do for every video. Then again, Enscape rendering time is quite fast anyways. Just to check that out, let us render what we have right now. See how, lo how long that would take. Actual video number one test whatever and let's see how fast we reach the one percent that's that two percent so all right that would be the the speed right now i think actually maybe it, 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 it might uh, sorry it might be equal when um we animate the time of day we'll see here to time of day you can animate it for every keyframe. And if you're new to animation in general, this might be uh, great to play around with because it gives you a feel for what your, uh, how your animation behaves. Like if you set one value for your first keyframe and one value for your last keyframe, by the way, you can do that for time of day. It's just the timestamp value. Um, if, you if you set one value on the first keyframe and one on the last, it will change between those two values throughout the entire video. So that's usually what you want to do with the time of day setting. You could, you know, change it for one keyframe to 3 p.m., the next keyframe to 12, uh, the next keyframe to 5 p.m., but it wouldn't look any nice. So usually with time of day, you'll go from, you know, keyframe one and you see in the time of day uh, row here we have a a a keying a value that we've set let's start with what 8 a.m maybe yeah a.m and let's end with I'm aiming for you know in this in these middle parts I'm aiming for some nice uh, noon sun something like that but it feels like oh it's 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 coming in the morning. It's visible in the morning. So, all right, anyways, never mind. I'm just gonna go to the last uh, keyframe here and select time of day and put this to 11 a.m. maybe. That way we're, we're still gonna be in the morning when we're in that indoors area. So again, most of my keyframes don't have a time of day keying now, but the first one and the last one both do so what does that look like let's press p oh yeah and as you see the shadows are moving the sun the the clouds in the sky are moving so we have a time lapse that gives us maybe some additional depth storytelling to our video so i like that i would keep that um as it is And before we get to the other two points, focal point and field of view, um, that we we are going to discuss afterwards, uh, I'm going to render this video because this video is perfect for what we've set up so far, and the other ones will require their own videos. I'm gonna hit the export button and check my notes.
actually this looks quite uh quite comparable in time uh to when the video uh, sorry when the daytime is not animated so uh never mind what i said earlier Yeah, so <laughs> actually I'm going to uh, save this video path uh, and uh, render it afterwards, just, you know, and, and include it in here so we save some time. In general, uh, I also didn't want to focus, or I don't want you to focus too much on this kind of video creation, on these fly-throughs um, that, you know, try to put everything into one go. It's a matter of choice. It's uh, a matter of artistic expression. So um, it's totally up to you. I personally feel that um, something... that um, something that works better in visual storytelling and gives more room to breathe is not these long winding videos that uh, move through the entire entire uh, project essentially, but rather sn small, sl uh, yeah, sorry, small snippets, short snippets put together. So something like, let me actually search for something that we can use to uh, to show the depth of field animation uh, doing so. So something like, for example, this here. One keyframe right here and another keyframe, something like a couple meters to the right or left or to the back or to the front. Let's press K. One second uh, duration right now. We're going to change this to 15 seconds. We're going to disable ease in and out because I want um, equal speed throughout the video. And um, I think I'm going to animate the time of day just slightly. So let's start with this 920 and end with 1030 or something. And now this is a great video. Let's have a look at it. Not too much movement. Uh, let's preview. This is a great way uh, to show what the focal point and the field of view animations do. Focal point is a setting that um, controls the distance, or if you, yeah, that controls the distance of um, the sharpest point of your camera, of your lens. Now, um, if we enable focal point and change the setting, nothing really happens um, because we need to add to to um, to set up a setting, a visual setting, which you can access up here through this button. Um, we need to enable depth of field before we can access uh, the focal point setting because that's what it refers to: the depth of field focal point, depth of field. Uh, as you see, will, whoops, sorry, that was the wrong slider. Here, depth of field will blur objects at a certain distance from the camera. We also, for focal point to have any effect, does it, does it, no, I was wrong, I was wrong, yeah. No, yeah, I am right. Uh, for focal point to have any effect, you also need to disable autofocus. Autofocus will use Enscape uh, intelligence to try to find the right point for the focus. Enable depth of field, disable autofocus, and then you can control 
the focal point distance for your videos. I'm going to dial down the depth of field a little bit to make it less, less strong. And now we can have a look at the result by keying the value. Namely, in this view, in my first view, I just select this bush here on the left, and that's the sharpest point. And in my last keyframe, I'll enable focal point as well, but I want another distance to be focused, namely the building. So uh, you see we have this little gray line, white line indicator that shows us where our distance is right now. So if the line is on the building, we are about right. And if we preview what's happening now, you'll see the bush is sharp. Now the individual lines on the uh, on the uh, cross, uh, sorry, lane crossing, street crossing um, are being sharpened. And now our building is sharp at the end. So, you know, you can use that for a uh, cinematic experience. I'm actually going to reduce the depth of field, but keep it in and save this as a video path as well. Depth of field. I'm going to render this later and include it here just so uh, we have something nice to see. And um, field of view works just the same way. Uh, we don't have to, 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 to change any visual settings for it to work. It will simply create or work as a zoom effect on your camera. So from one video, from one keyframe to the next, we can have a zoom effect. Let's have a look at that. And um, this whole thing leads me to the inclusion of um, video editing software, of, of uh, th yeah, third-party video editing software. Um, why? Because you can be as good as you want with the Enscape video editor, but it's more a video creator. So you're editing the camera path, um, but if you want to add something like music, or if you want to combine multiple shots, then um, you need third-party video software. Uh, I personally usually work with uh, Premiere Pro, um, but there are other softwares, of course, on the market. And for this webinar, I had a look at um, a software called DaVinci Resolve. And I actually wasn't even aware of the software for a long time, but it's a free software that um, produces, that lets you create high quality videos. And um, I would like to have a look at that with you together and see a couple more uh, interesting features that we can do with Enscape videos. And um, the software that I looked up, once again, usually I use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro um, to create my videos. But um, if you are looking for something uh, free to test with, I have found this awesome software. It's called DaVinci Resolve. Um, deep dive video creation. And you can create uh, or you can get very, mm, yeah, a lot more varied results um, when creating your videos using um, or yeah, when, when uh, adding a step in the creation of your videos and using this uh, software to combine multiple videos to one. Because I feel like um, there is a certain appeal if you put everything in one go, in one video. Um, and it's easy to do, actually. Let's have a look at what a 45 second video with music sounds or looks like in one cut.
Okay, so it's it's all right. Um, but let's compare and see what 45 seconds of video with music look like in multiple simpler cuts. depending on your uh, personal taste, of course. But I feel like um, a video that's, that consists of multiple smaller, simpler, calmer shots, um, I personally like that more than one video where it, it is one fly through trying to connect all the dots. Of course, it depends on the project, on the design that you, tr that, that you want to share and your personal um, preferences. But this also, like, on top of the re or on top on top of the option to add music to your videos using a third-party software, speaks, uh, in my opinion, for using a third-party software. There is one last trick, though, that I want to show you, um, that also speaks for using third-party video editing software, um, with which we're going to end this uh, deep dive webinar, um, because you can. You can render, you can export the same camera path. Um, you can export the same camera path multiple times from Enscape with various visual settings, view settings, hiding stuff, unhiding stuff uh, at various stages of the project, etc., etc. Essentially, you can render the same video path. Uh, one second, there we go. Again, I'm new to. DaVinci Resolve, so uh, yeah, there we are. So you can render the same camera path multiple times, overlay them exactly, just like this, and then fade from one to the other, uh, which means we're gonna put a fade somewhere in here. Let me go to edit to change the necessary settings, something like this, and I'm just gonna fade. So I'm gonna let the first version disappear or the first version of the video and we're slowly fading to another version of the video maintaining the same pace so um, this way we can create transitions between materials times of day um, visual settings whatever you want essentially and um, that's another really nice um, effect with which or that speaks for using um, third-party video video editing software on top of the Enscape video editor feature set. With this, however, um, I say thank you for being with me and uh, I hope you learned uh, a lot of new things and I hope it was interesting. Have fun creating amazing videos using Enscape and share them with us in the forums um, so the community can participate in on that. Thank you very much for being with me. Stay safe. See you next time. Goodbye.